Okay, so here we go. Some of my faves from August of 2024. This image is called Spotto. Now, I'm not sure if this happens outside of Australia, but in Australia we have a game called Spotto where you might be traveling in a car on holiday or walking around the street or whatever it is that you're doing. And we have a game where you're trying to look for something in particular. It could be a color, it could be a type of car, a type of person, or whatever it is. And if you see something like that, you yell out Spotto. Uh, this was, believe it or not, the very first image from this particular photo shoot. I came out of the QVB, the Queen Victoria building, the iconic QVB in, in the Sydney CBD, directly beside the town hall. And uh, immediately I noticed that this woman on the right with the sunglasses and the COVID mask was sitting on the edge uh, of, uh, I think it might have, yeah, I think that's the statue, the Queen Victoria statue. She was sitting at the base of it and she was in this beautiful soft window of light. And I knew that my shutter speed and aperture were already set so that I could take advantage and allow a lot of the detail in the background and around her to fall into shadow. And so I immediately held up the camera and took the shot. There was one frame where she was looking away and a more interesting subject on the left in a white shirt, more prominent in the left side of the frame. But I chose to go with this one because there's enough going on in the left side of the frame with people coming from the southern end of the CBD. And in this frame, obviously, she was looking toward me. And uh, I just think that this is a really striking image and I think it works really well in monochrome. So this image here I'm calling ghosting. Uh, this is the town hall station entry exit, the one pretty much right on the corner of George Street and Park Street in the Sydney CBD, directly opposite the entrance to the town hall building. What I like to do in this particular situation or this scene is I like to get myself on the on the shop side of the of the entrance to the town hall underground station and when the sun is relatively low in the sky and still able to peek over the top of that QVB building that you can see in the upper right part of the frame it's uh, it does a great job in splashing on to the dirty rustic look of the glass and uh, that creates a nice effect just on its own um, there's enough going on on the left hand side of the frame you can see the two young guys exiting the station and then through the glass you can see the people coming across the tram tracks outside of the town hall building but even just alone on the right hand side there's a, just just that alone there's enough going on there and that's why I called it ghosting because you can see the young woman in the striped jumper entering the, st the, the stairwell that goes down to the underground train station but if your eyes then enable you to move backward from that back towards the QVB have a look at what's going on there it's almost like uh, it's a, a double or a triple exposure you can see the people in the background that are just hanging around that very very busy intersection there are reflections from the glass from people behind me beside me on the other side of the glass um, just uh, just that alone tends to be a bit of a maze of people and and even if you only focus on the right side of that frame there is plenty uh, to be engaged with and I just thought that that worked really well and provided in my opinion a, a ghosting effect. So this image here I'm calling Solidarity. It was a fairly culturally sensitive day in the Sydney CBD on this day because you had the protest going on here by the people from Venezuela and no more than 100 metres away, there was another protest going on simultaneously with people from Bangladesh. Uh, apparently, the Venezuelans uh, around the world actually were demonstrating to defend the opposition's victory claim in a recent uh, national election. Uh, I have nothing further to add to that. Uh, I'm not well read in terms of uh, international politics uh, certainly in that region of the world and I certainly wouldn't go there anyway through fear of potentially offending Venezuelans but uh, I thought that um, it was a fascinating image and uh, when I came across it uh, I took a handful or quite a, a great deal of photos just standing five ten meters back and then I tried to venture in closer to the people uh, demonstrating and I was able to get right up close and then lean forward and capture this picture. Uh, what I love mainly about this image here is 
the young guy that you can see right in the centre of the frame. You can see that the balloons, starting with the bottom right corner, present uh, a leading line almost like on a 45 degree angle and then they get to the one on the edges of the Australian flag and then go upward and that leads you straight to the face of the young male there who has his hoodie on. But as you can see, his face is partially covered by the blue balloon and it's almost like he's winking but he's staring straight at me because I had the camera pointed straight at him eye in the viewfinder and we were just positively engaged for those brief few moments and he didn't flinch which I thought was fantastic I was hoping that he wouldn't look away uh, I call it so solidarity of course because you can see the Venezuelans protesting but of course what is prominent just left of center in this frame is the Australian flag which is a great thing to see I think the image is well balanced by the colorful balloons very colorful balloons in the bottom right corner then as I said you've got the leading line you've got the prominent character of the young male right in the middle partially covered by the balloon the large Australian flag and then the young lady in the bottom left corner uh, a pretty striking image in my opinion. Okay, so this one I'm calling circa 1958. Why? Because in the background, in text, in between the two pictures, you can see that the time frame for the pictures was circa 1958. This is at the very northern end of the Sydney CBD, exactly where the CBD meets the Circular Quay and uh, Sydney Harbour Precinct. I purposely stood on a 45 degree angle. I didn't want to stand side on because I wanted to create an effect where if I hit the shutter at the right time when a character or subject was in the extreme right of the frame, then the leading line from the character's eyes in the right side of the frame would then take you along through both of the images and then hopefully run into a character on the far left of the frame and that's exactly what happened here. Uh, I did have to stand here for about 10 or 15 minutes which is a long time for me, maybe not for you guys, but that's a long time for me to be standing in the one spot and I was extremely lucky, um, grateful that one of the characters that did enter the frame from the right was a gentleman with a bald head and the reason why I say that is because I just think it allows him to be more prominent in the frame with the light falling beautifully from the west uh, onto him. Um, I think it worked better than someone with a large head of hair or, or a hat that was dominating uh, their head. And I think in terms of scale, um, I think I was fairly lucky here and got it right because I wanted the person on the right to be more prominent in the frame. And I'm not entirely sure that whatever subject ended up being in the left side of the frame, I didn't want them any bigger than how this gentleman appears on the left-hand side. So I'm really happy with the sense of scale in this. And as I said, for me, when I look at the gentleman on the right with the bald head, my eye immediately starts to move left and across those images, which of course, in this instance, is the hero of the frame. Okay, so the next two images were both shot in circular key uh, beneath the awnings that lead into the ferry wharves and they are both great examples of how you can manipulate the light falling into that area from the western sky late in the afternoon and play around with your shutter speed and aperture and allow you to isolate certain characters with vibrant bright colours and then allow others to just slowly fall off into shadow. This first one I'm calling Midnight Blue because uh, the scene is obviously mostly in darkness. I've set it up so that most of the scene will fall, in this instance, almost completely into shadow, and therefore you have that midnight effect. And blue, of course, because of the uh, the, the vibrant blue parka uh, or puffy jacket on the woman on the far right-hand side of the frame. This, to me, uh, allows you to gravitate straight towards her, not only because of the vibrant blue jacket, but also her face is beautifully lit with that soft late afternoon western sun. And then your eye immediately wants to move from right to left, and there is just enough detail in the characters in the background. And because uh, at least two of them, maybe more, uh, are guys on bikes wearing high-vis vests, there's just enough punch and colour there and enough light on their faces to just make out enough detail for the centre and then towards the left of the frame to be, um, well, to have enough detail in there to be engaging. So, uh, as I said, the hero of the shot, the woman on the right in the blue jacket, and um, then the gentleman 
and other people moving across to the left hand side of the frame. I, uh, I really love that image. And here's the second image. This one I'm simply calling grumpy and it should be blatantly obvious. If it's not, take a look in the center of the frame. Have a look at the look on the woman's face. Now, I have absolutely no idea why she was looking that way. It certainly wasn't because of the, uh, the sun, uh, because she had sunglasses on anyway. But um, it's certainly made for a very engaging frame. Um, to a certain degree, it's just people walking by. But when they're being beautifully lit by the low western sun and they have a sense of purpose um, you can just see that you know they're, they're part of the hustle and bustle and they they have some purpose they're trying to get somewhere and she obviously is perturbed about something um, it just makes for a very engaging frame when you're looking around and seeing the character on people now the gentleman on the right hand side in the red shirt uh, he has that look where he's sort of half noticed me and is looking toward me and wanting to hustle past me at the same time because of the scale of he against what I assume to be or who I assume to be his wife beside him he's more prominent in the scale uh, in the frame and I, and I find that engaging then you have the person in between he and uh, his wife who is looking directly at me and again the star of the show in my in my opinion is is the woman because of the the look on on her face and then as the eyes start moving away towards the left of the frame again as I said with the previous image there is just enough light and therefore detail falling upon the people in the other side of the frame and so your eyes aren't wandering from right to left and then stopping and subconsciously thinking there's nothing here uh, there's something to look at right across the frame starting with the far right hand side so once again I really enjoy this image in that particular scene as well so I'm calling this image Good Time Sitcom. For those of you who are much, much younger than me, you may not know what that means. I'm talking about the very famous 70s sitcom out of the US called Good Times. Um, and I think, as far as I'm concerned, and the reason why I called it Good Time Sitcom, is that there is an image or a painting. Is it an image or a painting? And I can't remember whether it was at the start of the show or the end. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. And it was an image that typified the, the ghetto or the neighborhood associated with the couple and, the, and all of the characters in the show. And it became really synonymous with the show. And in, in my opinion, the image typified the era of the time. When I got this image back, which was taken uh, at the Sydney Opera House, right at the top of the steps of the Sydney Opera House on the Sydney Harbour Bridge side, uh, when I started editing this image, it just gave me a feel like people were just hanging around and laying around like they are in a ghetto or a community. And it was a really rustic, laid back type of image. And that was immediately the vision um, that, that I got, uh, that I felt. Um, and I decided to get a little funky with this one. I almost never do this, but I start, decided to get a little funky and make like an arty type ed edit. But it's just people simply sitting around at the 90 degree corner at the top of the steps with the sun in the western sky coming down over the top of the uh, International Cruise Terminal and the Sydney Harbour Bridge lighting up these people on the corner. And um, visually... I just think it was pretty striking. You've got the, the beautiful glass aspect of the lower concourse of the Sydney uh, Opera House behind them and then the sky over in the top right-hand corner which is on the eastern side leaning towards uh, the Heads and Manly and um, Garden Island Naval Dockyards. Um, yeah, it just kind of gave me that vibe and I thought it worked really well, particularly with the, the arty edit. Okay, last image, folks. This one I'm calling Ten Pin Monks. This was from a Saturday morning shoot in Cabramatta. And the reason why I'm calling it Ten Pin Monks is because the monks that are exiting the internal part of this particular market area and coming out into the sunlight look like they're holding ten pin bowling balls. Obviously, they're not, but that's what it looks like from afar. At least that's where my mind goes. Uh, the sun was falling beautifully into this side street where the fish market is and because of the shutter speed and aperture that I was shooting at plus of course a lot less light inside the market that enabled everything beyond the leading monk there to fall into shadow and I love the effect it has beyond 
the leading monk in that you can really only see the bottom half of the second monk and then the bottom half of the two people that look like they're about to enter that internal market area and there's also just enough light to light the guy on the left with the shopping trolley but obviously vibrant punchy orange color on the monks and uh, that combination with the relative darkness behind them, I thought allowed them to be very punchy and vibrant and stand out and a nice little play on words with the whole 10 pin theme. So I'm really fond of this image mainly because of the, the striking orange color.